Hi everyone, today we are going to solve a third order non-homogeneous linear equation with constant coefficients. Let's start by writing the characteristic equation. It will be r cubed plus r squared minus 2 equals 0. You can either graph this function and find the r-intercepts or sometimes if a function is a neat, uh, function of it's easy enough you can just guess a solution for instance here we can just guess that there is a solution r equals 1 let me find the other solutions by dividing this polynomial by r minus 1 or by using the synthetic division so the way we do synthetic division we write the solution 1 then we separate it from the coefficients of the polynomial which are 1, 1, 0, and negative 2. We have a 0 because there is no first power of r, but we must include that coefficient. Then we fill out two more rows of values. First step, we bring down the first 1, then we multiply 1 times 1, 1, and add first and second row. 1 plus 1 is 2. Then we multiply again. 1 times 2 is 2, and add plus 0, 2. One more time, 1 times 2 is 2, and add 0. We expected this to be a 0. This is our remainder. Since r equals 1 was a solution, and the polynomial is divisible by r minus 1. And these are the coefficients of the quotient. Or in other words, you can write it as 1r squared plus 2r plus 2. That means that instead of this form, we can write the factored form. r minus 1 times r squared plus 2r plus 2 equals 0. We already found the first solution, r equals 1, so let's find the solution, um, the solutions of this factor. I will use the quadratic formula. r equals negative 2 plus or minus square root of 2 squared minus 4 times 1 times 2 divided by 2 times 1 or negative 2 plus or minus square root of negative 4 divided by 2, which equals negative 2 plus or minus 2i divided by 2, and we need to separate real from imaginary part, so that will be negative 1 plus or minus i. That means that the real part of that complex number is negative 1, and the imaginary part is positive 1. Now let's write the solution of the associated homogeneous equation, or in other words, when we ignore the right-hand side, and that solution is usually called a complementary function. I will label it y sub c. It is equal to c sub 1 e to the power of our first real solution, which was 1 times x, plus e to the power real part of the imaginary solution, negative 1 times x, multiplied by c sub 2 cosine real part of the imaginary number 1 times x plus c sub 3 sine 1 times x. Well, in other words, complementary function is c sub 1 e to the x plus e to the negative x c sub 2 cosine x plus c sub 3 sine x. Now, let's take a look one more time at the right-hand side of our original equation. It was this expression right here, which you may also distribute and get it to this form. The bottom line is that we have these three functions, and if you will think about the derivatives, in particular up to the third order derivative, since our equation was ordered 3, it will also consist of terms that are constant multiples of e to the x, x e to the x, and x squared e to the x. Don't forget, you will have to use the product rule. So making an educated guess for a particular solution will give me y particular equals a e to the x plus bx e to the x plus cx squared e to the x. However, what we may notice is that this term right here duplicates a term in the complementary function. 
And the method is if you have a duplicate term, you have to multiply all the terms in your particular solution corresponding to that function by the lowest power of x that eliminates that duplication. And that would be everything will have to be multiplied by x. Well, in other words, the particular solution will be ax e to the x plus bx squared e to the x plus cx cubed e to the x. Now, we are moving to the most tedious part of that method. What we need to do is to find first, second, and third derivative of this particular solution and substitute it in our equation. For convenience of finding those derivatives, I factored out e to the x. And now I will do the same thing for all my other derivatives. Plus, don't forget, we have to use the product rule right here. We get y particular prime equals derivative of v is itself times the second function plus uh, first function e to the x times derivative of the second function. And to simplify it, I will factor out e to the x. I get ax plus bx squared plus cx cubed plus a plus 2bx plus 3cx squared. Now, second derivative. Again, we have to use the product rule. Derivative of v is itself. Copy all that. Plus e to the x times the derivative of that sum. Don't forget, uh, derivative of a with respect to x will be 0 since a is a constant. Now, let me combine like terms and factor out e to the x. Alright, after combining like terms, I'm getting this lone expression. And we still need the third derivative. So, we'll have first function e to the x, derivative is itself, times, copy all this, make sure to be very careful, because if you make one little mistake, everything else will be wrong. Plus e to the x, derivative of all that, don't forget it will be with respect to x, which means derivative of 2a and derivative of 2b will be zeros. We have All right, now let me combine like terms between this and this. All right, so we get in this lone expression. I also factored out e to the x for convenience. Now, the next step will be substituting all three derivatives in our original equation. Remember, we had third derivative plus second derivative minus two times um, our function y equals this. So what I'm going to do, I'm going to substitute my particular solution and its third and second derivative right here. And if you notice, all of them have e to the x in the front, so I'm just going to go ahead and factor it out. Plus, when you copy it very carefully, there is no coefficient in front of y third derivative and y second derivative, but there is a negative 2 in front of y, so multiply each term in y particular by negative 2. All right, so this is what I got after substituting all the derivatives and particular solution in the equation. This first line right here is my third derivative, then second derivative, and this is particular solution multiplied by negative 2. Now go ahead and cancel out some 
like terms and let's see what's left so we have cx cube cx cube negative 2 cx cube cancel out bx squared bx squared negative 2 bx squared cancels out ax ax 2ax cancels out and uh, let's take a look what we have here we have constants then we have terms with x and terms with x squared and since we're looking for solution of this equation this equation has to be an identity so size should be identical for any value of x which means the total constant on this side should be equal to the total constant on this side the total term with x on this side should be equal to the total term with x on this side and the same goes for the term with x squared in addition, we can also cancel out e to the x since it's a factor on both sides and it's never equal to zero. So we have our constants 3a plus 6b plus 6c uh, plus 2a plus 2b equals 14. Then terms with x, the coefficients are 6b plus 18c plus 4b plus 6c equals 34 and uh, the very last coefficients in front of x squared 6c squared I'm sorry 6c plus 9c equals 15 so what we get here is a system of equations. Obviously, we can simplify it and solve for a, b, and c. After simplifying the system, I get these equations. That means c equals 1. If you plug in 1 into the second equation, we get b equals 1. And plugging in those 1s into the first equation, we get a equals 0. That means the particular solution will be e to the x. Then, since we have 0 times x, we don't have that term. Plus 1 times x squared plus this 1 times x cubed. And right in the general solution, we'll have to add complementary function plus the particular solution. That will be c1 e to the x plus e to the negative x, c sub 2 cosine x plus c sub 3 sine x plus the particular solution e to the x times x squared plus x cubed.